Good morning. On behalf of the Department of Veterans Affairs, Northern California Health Care System, the City of Rancho Cordova, Alpha Graphics Rancho Cordova, Rancho Cordova Elks Lodge number 2484, and Republic Services, I welcome all of you to the 10th Annual Memorial Day Ceremony. Our theme this year, In Peace and War, Remembering Our Veterans and Honoring the United States Merchant Marines. I know they got mariners here, but I go back to the old days. I'm going to stick to the Marines. Yeah. I would like to thank the Rancher Cordova River City Concert Band. They do one hex of a job. Tom Seaton, <laughs> Janet, great job. Now that you're all seated, why don't you all get up and say hello to the person next to you, shake hands, whatever you want to do. If you got a cold like me, you better not, but that's all right. <clears throat> uh, don't sit down because you're going to be standing up so I forgot to mention that. Be sure you remain standing. We'll now have the presentation of the colors. We got the Cordova High School U.S. Air Force Junior ROTC under the direction of Richard J. Keyes, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Air Force retired. And Raymond A. Kirkland, Command Sergeant Major, United States Air Force, retired also. So, gentlemen, if you'll present the colors. We'll have the singing of our national anthem performed by Janice Schwartz with the River City Concert Band. of Allegiance by Phelps Hobart, President of the Pacific Merchant Marine Council, Navy League of the United States. Phelps. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Order, oh. Order arms. Oh. 
Hold, hold. Let's give him a big hand. A great young unit. We now have the invocation by Deacon Walter J. Little, St. John Vianney's Parish. Good to see you again, buddy. Good to see you, sir, always. Let us pray. O oh God of life and of history, we gather on this occasion for sacred remembrances and a renewal of our spirits. We remember with a sense of gratitude and humility all those who gave their lives in this nation's wars and conflicts. We come to renew our resolution to make of their deaths a meaning that shall be for peace and justice and the birth of a new hope in the earth. May we remember this day the dead, not only of our nation's wars, but, of also, but also of all wars in all lands, where men, women, and children have lost their lives to the harsh and bitter cruelty of human combat. In our remembrances, may, may we not be puffed up with the overbearing pride of a false and narrow patriotism but rather may we be endowed with a generous patriotism that reaches out to the human family on every continent and shore. May we come to the love the earth and your universal kingdom of love and justice with a zeal equal to and surpassing our love of country. Make us more compassionate, loving, and forgiving as we call to mind the tragic deaths wrought by so many wars in so many lands that our hearts cannot contain them for fear of breaking. Let peace come in a thousand tongues and myriad languages. May we renew ourselves in that lifelong quest for the impossible dream of thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, of our dearest wishes, fondest hopes, and heartfelt prayers. So be it. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. You may be seated. And now I'd like to introduce David, Mr. David Stockwell, Director of VA Northern California Healthcare System, for a few words. Well, good morning. What a beautiful day here at the VA. I want to thank all of you for coming out today. In the words of Secretary McDonald, today is a day of remembrance, reflection, and respect. So thank you for taking a few moments out of your holiday to remember, to reflect, and to show respect. This is the 10th annual uh, celebration of Memorial Day here at Veterans Plaza at VA Northern California. We're just thrilled to be part of the community uh, activities each year. I want to give a big thank you to the city of Rancho Cordova, uh, the members of the organizing committee, uh, our employees, and most of all, to the veterans that we serve here at VA Northern California. <laughs> this year's event is focused on honoring the U.S. Merchant Marine, often known as the sail Sailors our country forgot. Today and every day, we hope to express our gratitude for your service to our country. The Merchant Marine has maintained an active role and been a critical support in every conflict our country has endured since 1775. More than 250,000 merchant mariners sailed during World War II, 
alongside the Army, Navy, Marine Corps in both the Pacific and the Atlantic. They tirelessly carried 203 million tons of supplies and materials to support the war. They were the subject of attack by enemy submarines, surface raiders, mines, bombers, kamikazes. Amongst the services, the merchant marine had the second highest casualty rate during World War II, which often goes unrecognized. They lost 733 ships during that conflict and more than 8,600 lives. Merchant ships also played a significant role in the Vietnam War, as ships crewed by civilian seamen carried 75% of the supplies used by our armed forces. The Merchant Marine were promised the same benefits by President Franklin Roosevelt as other veterans, but he passed away before he could make that happen. And for most Merchant Marines, it wasn't until 1988 that they achieved veteran status, like their fellow um, soldiers, airmen, seamen. For some, it wasn't until 1998. So today, we're here to specially recognize those that served in the US Merchant Marine. We must recognize their unwavering sacrifice for our country, motivated by duty and a sense of calling. The Merchant Marine song, which I think we're going to get to hear a little bit later, titled Heave Ho, really says all you need to know about their spirit. Give us the goods and we'll deliver. Damn the submarine. We're men of the Merchant Marine. Every minute, every hour, every day, Americans enjoy the blessings of a peace-loving nation. Blessings protected by the selfless service of men and women in uniform, standing lonely watches on far distant ramparts of freedom, and when necessary, standing against the forces of fear and tyranny. Let us always remember, especially today, that freedom isn't free. May we recognize and honor the veterans who came before us, especially the merchant marines today, and the warriors in today's audience. This Memorial Day has a special meaning for me. Uh, six months ago, my only daughter was married uh, to uh, senior airman Travis Cole, who's here in the audience today. And so Travis, since I can't embarrass my daughter hardly at all any longer, will you please stand just for a moment? Uh, thank, thank you, Travis. Uh, Defending the freedoms of our country hits closest to us when we have family and loved ones that participate in the conflict. But for those that are here today whose sacrifice cost the life of an individual defending our freedom, may we take a special moment to connect with them, to thank them, and to remember the sacrifice. May God bless the United States of America, and may we always be the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Next on our welcoming list is the Honorable David M. Sander, Mayor, City of Rancho Cordova. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Bob. Thank you. It's an honor to stand here representing the people of this all-America city of Rancho Cordova on this beautiful day, so filled with memory and with hope. In thinking about these remarks, I thought of my forefathers and their sacrifices that we might be here today. And I think of the future with the hope that my son may enjoy the freedoms of those sacrifices. This is what Memorial Day symbolizes for Americans, a time to take a clear look at our history and at our future. This one day each year when we acknowledge the debt we owe to those brave men and women who, because they so treasured peace, chose to live as soldiers, as warriors. Could anything be more paradoxical than the lives of our American soldiers? 
They love America, so they spend long years away from her in foreign countries far from her shores. They venerate freedom, so they ransom their own that we might be free. They fight for our right to live as individuals and yet yield their individuality to that cause. And most of all, they value life and yet so bravely prepare themselves to die in service of our great country. For more than 225 years, our military has provided a stronghold against our enemies. In that time, the world has changed, and our armed forces have adapted to those changes, but the courage, dignity, and metal of the men and women in uniform remain unaltered. From Valley Forge to Normandy, from San Juan Hill to Operation Enduring Freedom, the fighting spirit of our American soldier infuses the history and spirit of our great nation. The founders of the United States understood that our armed forces would be the bastion from which America would guard its freedoms. George Washington stated, by keeping up in peace a well-regulated and disciplined militia, we shall take the fairest and best method to preserve for a long time to come the happiness, dignity, and independence of our country. The foresight of those words has been fulfilled time and time again. The cost of that vision has been incredible for our nation's periods of peace have been few. The longest time of complete peacefulness for our military was a short 23 years between the end of World War I and the beginning of World War II. Since the Revolutionary War, the Veterans Administration has identified more than 45 million men and women who have served in America's armed forces. More than 600,000 of those resolute and noble warriors died in combat. So why are we Americans so seemingly willing to fight and, if necessary, to die? The answer to that, comp to that question is complex, but yet it's as simple as the heart and soul of America. We fight because we believe in something, not that war is a good thing, but that sometimes it is a necessary thing. Our soldiers fight and bleed and die not for glory of war or conquest, but for the prize of freedom. The heart of America is freedom for ourselves and any nation who's willing to fight for it. Yes, the price is high, very high indeed, but freedom is a treasure that no debt can encumber. So we act to remember the past, to learn its lessons, because the payment for forgetfulness is extreme. Duty, service, sacrifice, and many, many times, wounds and death paid by heroic and gallant men and women in uniform. Only fools would choose to forget so costly a lesson. These are forefathers who we honor today, brave men and women, each so different in heritage and upbringing, shared the common bounds of our armed forces, duty and sacrifice. All of them reached an instant in their lives when race, religion, creed, class made no difference. What remained in them was the very essence of America, the fighting spirit of a proud, courageous people. They are soldiers who paid the high price for the freedoms we enjoy today. And as we remember these valiant warriors on this Memorial Day, we must look to our future as well as our past. Today, freedom still comes cloaked in uncertainty. America still relies on her sons and daughters to defend her freedoms and our liberties. The cost of independence remains high, but we are willing to pay it. We do not pay it gladly, but we pay it with deep honor and obligation to those who have sacrificed their good lives for our great America. And so we stand here in the all-America city of Rancho Cordova with our long heritage of service. And here at the former Mather Air Force Base, at this hospital, at this memorial plaza, in the company of these veterans and these citizens on this Memorial Day, and we remember and we hope. Thank you.
And now the Honorable Robert J. McGarvey, Chairman of the Memorial and Veterans Day Committee, our boss. Give him a big hand. You know, what can I say? I had a long speech, but everybody's already said most of what I was going to say. Actually, I had this much, so it'll be a little bit shorter. Since this is our 10th annual Memorial Day ceremony, we um, started a year ago. We started in November 11, 2006. That was our first Veterans Day. Then 2007, Memorial Day. So this is our 10th, and I'm very glad to have that. Because we didn't have anything really, we didn't have a parade, didn't have a place. But this was dedicated in May of 2006. It's a perfect place to come. So we're um, continuing to honor all of our veterans and their families. That's one of the things about Memorial Day is we talk about families too, because they also sacrifice. Today we honor the veterans and their families for the past, the present, and the future, and find words to say thank you to the Merchant Marine and each one of you here today. It's be difficult sometimes to say the right thing. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Everyone here does exactly that. They live by the words and they show all of us exactly what honor is. Thank you all the veterans, thank you to the Merchant Marine, and we have many other things we're going to have for our theme this coming uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day, but today is the day, and hey, there's a breeze, I like that. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Happy Memorial Day. Now we have a little music, uh, dates back before my time. Tom, over there. Tom. At this time, I'd like to make the 
introductions of our guests. And I have the Honorable Dr. Ami Berra, U.S. Congress, California 7th District. Doc. Dr. Todd Irby, Deputy Secretary of the California Department of Veterans Affairs. The Mayor of Rancho Cordova, David M. Sander. The Vice Mayor, Mayor Donald Terry. Council Member, Robert J. McGarvey. Council Member Dan Skoglin. I had to get a big hand in that one. The tenth year, I finally got his name right. That's all right. Council Member Linda Budge. And I got a note here that I didn't know I had. The city manager for the city of Rancho Cordova. Where are you at? And there you go. We have Zach Ford, board member, Folsom Cordova Unified School District. <clears throat> Gary Strong, CEO, Capital Region of the American Red Cross. Gary, I know you're here. <laughs> Thomas A. Cropper, Rear Admiral, U.S. Navy, retired, President of the California Maritime Academy. <laughs> Have I missed any dignitaries? Uh-oh, who'd I miss? Ken Cook? Whoa. Man, am I in trouble now. <laughs> the Honorable former Councilman of Rancho Cordova, Ken Cooley. My apologies, sir. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get fired on something like that. that. That's what they keep telling me. I'm hoping, but you know. Anybody else I missed? Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Rick Swinfer, the PER from Rancho Cordova Elks Lodge, and he's gonna take a segment of this, and possibly my replacement, maybe. <laughs> Behave yourself. Thank you, good morning. We're gonna do a, a small presentation for 100 years of memory for the conflicts that we've been in. But I have to, one of, one of my sign holders just left in an ambulance I uh, pray that he'll uh, he'll be okay. Jack from the Rancho Cordova Lodge, we, I need you, buddy. So if you'll go over there and, and grab your sign, they'll talk you through it. <clears throat> We're going to do a recognition of veterans right now. The band will play an armed services medley. When your service song is played, please rise and be recognized. And when they're done, with their service songs, the Merchant Marine Anthem will be played by Ralph Buell. Those of you that are Merchant Mariners, please stand to be recognized at that time too.
United States Air Force. And now the uh, em anthem of the Merchant Marines, played by Ralph Bell. All Merchant Marines, please rise. That was beautiful, thank you. I would now like to take a moment to honor 100 years of sacrifice from World War I to present. John Beta is representing the casualties of World War I. Come on out, John. We lost 116,516 American service members in World War I. John is a World War II veteran. He's 95 years old, and he was a pilot. Thank you, John. <laughs> Retired Lieutenant Colonel Robert G. Burns will be representing World War II. Four hundred and five thousand three hundred and ninety nine American service members were lost during that conflict. Colonel Burns served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. <laughs> Next, we have uh, our stand in Jack from the Rancho Court of Elks Lodge representing the casualties of the Korean War. We lost 36,516 American service members in Korea. Ken Anderson, retired United States Army, will be representing the casualties of Vietnam.
In Vietnam, we lost 58,209 America's service members. Ken received three Purple Hearts from Vietnam. Next, we have James Rowe. He was in the United States Marine Corps. He will be representing three conflicts, Beirut, Grenada, and Panama. In Panama, we lost 266 service members. In Beirut, 19, and in Grenada, and 40, that's oh, okay, I got it wrong. You guys see the numbers. <laughs> Sorry about that, my, my numbers are wrong here. Thank, thank you, uh, James, for stepping in for us. Eric Holmes. <laughs> Eric was in the United States Navy. He is representing the Gulf War. We lost 238 American service members to the Gulf War. Eric, thank you for stepping up. I also served in the Desert Shield, Desert Storm War. Tara Ricks. She's representing the Iraq War. We lost 4,489 members who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Tara was in the United States Army. <laughs> Kingston. And I got Kingston's last name wrong, I'm sure. Durham? Dillard. Dillard. He's representing the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> to date, we've lost 2,356 service members that gave the ultimate sacrifice. And unfortunately, as the war on terror continues, we continue to feel the pain and lose American lives. As we gather here today, America's finest are in the battlefield as we speak, braving the fight and protecting our homeland. Kingston was also in the United States Army. We have Frank Mendez representing the Merchant Marines. In World War II, we lost 9,521 during that conflict. Thank you, Frank. <clears throat> As you can see before you, the price of our freedom has been high. Every day when I have the opportunity to recognize a veteran from wearing their ball cap or a service t-shirt, or I see somebody in uniform, I proudly thank them for their service. I, I think we all do. The sacrifice of service to our country is honorable. Memorial Day is that one time every year we want, we honor and remember those who died in service of our great country. The sacrifice of their service is heroic. God bless the more than 1.1 million Americans who have died in wars that America has been involved in. God bless the families who have suffered the losses. And God bless all of us Americans who enjoy the daily freedoms and liberties given to us 
and protected by these ultimate sacrifices. Thank you very much. We're going to do our honorary placing of the wreaths. So I'm looking for uh, Commander Robert Breen and John Myers. Entering from my right are Commander Robert Bean, President, and John Myers, Fre Pre Vice President of Military F Affairs, and Tal Norwood, Public Affairs Officer, Sacramento Council, Navy League of the United States. Thank you, gentlemen. Also entering from my right, Harvey Holcomb, President, and Byron Drew, Commander, National Sojourners Incorporated, Sacramento Chapter 133, and Heroes of 76. Thank you, gentlemen. We're now going to do our recognition of newly placed bricks. I call uh, Dr. Don Erkenbrack, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army, retired, Associate Director of the Sacramento Valley Northern California Health Care System. Good morning. The Mor Memorial Plaza began with a vision by local veterans who dreamed of a quiet place on this campus to reflect on the gift of the great men and women who served in our military. In 2001, a group of local veterans, one of them Mr. Joe Fracola, a World War II veteran, raised more than $400,000 in donations and dedicated more than 18,700 7, 18, hours to making the dream come true. The theme of the plaza is coming home, as symbolized by the bronze statue of a medic returning home uh, with his young daughter on his shoulders. The plaza was designed to hold 8,000 bricks, and since the dedication of the Memorial Plaza on May 25th of 2006, a total of 2,227 bricks have been placed in honor of those who served. Historically, during each Memorial Day and Veterans Day celebrations, newly ordered bricks are placed until the plaza is full. However, uh, this year we had a slight problem getting the bricks and have ordered uh, silver plates that you may see noted here, uh, which reflect the, uh, sir, the name and service of the individual until the actual bricks can arrive.
The actual bricks uh, will, be arri will arrive and be placed by the end of June of 2006. I will now read the names of those who will be immortalized on our plaza. As each name is called, a representative of the honoree will be escorted to the plaza and will place a carnation on their brick in memory of their loved one's service to our country. The first uh, honoree is Greg and Rachel Spiker. <laughs> Kathy Pulse. Al Stoddard. Terry Bain. Michael Daly. Joe Fifhover. Kalina Joyce. Robert Malin. Robert Joyce. Robert Wagner. Frederick Lewis. QM2 Morris. Samuel Massey. Vincent Massey. Alan Massey. Deborah Massey. Raymond Massey. B.M. Manzanares. Jerry Johnson. Assembly 3451 to honor all veterans. Leroy Myas, Joseph Uli, M.
M. Myers Jackson. Kiki Myers. Lewis Love Jr. Robert Jennings. Alvin Clam. Paul Bagnaski. Brent Bagnasty, <laughs> William Clark, Horst Lewinsky. Clayton Berriesford, Doc Dolly, Don Dolly, Mike Dolly. John McIntosh, Neil Orchard, Dan Sickich. Gerald Williams, Robert Fink, Scott Lewis, This concludes the reading of the names. Tom, you're on. That's the next thing in the program. Brotherhood from 
speakers, the Honorable Dr. Ami Berra, U.S. Congress, California 7th District. Sir, you're on. Thank you, Bob. You know, I love this statue here coming home because when our sons and daughters answer the call to duty and go off to protect our country, protect who we are as Americans and the values that our country was founded upon, we wish and pray that they all come home safely. But we know that not to be the case. And that's why Memorial Day is such a sacred holiday for us. Because it is the day that we stop and take pause and say prayers and thank those that paid the ultimate sacrifice, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters that did not return home, and to their families who paid that sacrifice. Because as we've already heard, our freedoms are not free. It is those that answer that call to duty to protect us. And on behalf of a grateful nation and a grateful community, we say thank you for that sacrifice. We also know, you know, looking at, um, 
those that perished in the conflicts. Ours is not a nation that seeks war. Ours is not a nation that seeks to conquer other nations. But ours is a nation that protects the values that our country was founded upon, the values of freedom and individual liberty. And that is what those men and women, our sons and daughters, stepped up to do, to, to, to protect who we are and the values upon which our country was founded. And it's not always that they're protecting those values here in the United States, but they also cherish, and we cherish as Americans, those values all across the world, which is why so often our men and women have to answer the call to duty to protect freedom and individual liberties across this globe. So on this Memorial Day, I want to say God bless our fallen heroes. I also want to say God bless all of our veterans and the veterans and their families that are here today and across this country. And I also want to thank and bless the men and women that to this day answer the call to duty and service around the world, protecting those values of liberty and individual freedom upon which our nation was founded upon. God bless America and God bless all of you and thank you for your service. Be well. Thank you, sir. And now we have the Honorable Ken Cooley, California State Assembly, 8th District. Well, good morning on this Memorial Day 2016. It is certainly an honor to come as we solemnize this day, the memory of those who gave their all. And um, today I just want to offer some reflections upon this day, and particularly as we honor the United States Merchant Mariners. And I love the fact that it was pointed out that from the earliest days of our country, those who have gone down to the sea in ships have been a vital part of our nation's prosperity, well-being, and endurance in the face of threats. Um, of course, we know in World War II, they were indispensable to the global effort. When it was estimated seven to 15 tons of supplies is what it took to support a combatant on the front lines throughout that global conflict. And that did not happen but for those who went down to the sea in ships. And there's that essential random quality of all war, but certainly traveling, venturing out upon the high seas where currents and storms in a day before GPS and satellite navigation, uh, when fog can set in and affect your guidance, and the enemy lurks, as we know happened throughout World War II. Um, this quality of venturing forth to do good on behalf of a nation and a world in the face of such inherent uncertainty and risk is a marvel. It's already been shared that because of the losses of the merchant mariners, they ranked at the top of those branches of the service in terms of loss of life as a percentage of those engaged in that. And part of my reflection today, I felt a tad of guilt last Veterans Day as my work called me to go elsewhere for the day, out of state. And so early last Veterans Day, before anyone was here, I, I stopped here on the way to the airport. Stopped here to see my dad's brick here in the plaza. Spend a few moments reflecting upon Veterans Day here in my home of Rancho Cordova. Part of the randomness of life is bad, it's also good. On that day, I arrived here early and found that, huh, how about that? The rising sun was just above the horizon and I saw it glinting off the fuselage of this aircraft behind me. So I thought, well, that's sort of a, a Veterans Day memory when I have to travel by air. So I went and caught that picture of the rising sun 
on Veterans Day in Rancho Cordova last fall. My day's travels took me to San Antonio. Um, um, and as I was flying into San Antonio, I realized that same sun is still up and shining on the Alamo where every defender died. And my first stop in San Antonio was to catch the day's fading light glinting off the Alamo. What a marvel that was on a Veterans Day. And then as I come here today, I realized we remember the Alamo because all died. And yet in the record of service of the Merchant Marine, 31 vessels d disappeared without a trace in World War II, most of them to torpedoes. We know this because eventually we found the records of those. And so that reminds us that this branch of our armed services whom we honor today is a branch that when things went good, they carried the logistics on which the entire global war effort mattered and when they did not go well, they suffered their own type of Alamo on the high seas, lost, remembered. So to conclude, I wish to note that um, as this is the year in which we remember Pearl Harbor, the 75th anniversary, December 7th, 2016, also on December 7th, 1941, the SS Cynthia Olson was the first US flag ship torpedoed by a Japanese submarine in World War II. So as we later this year reflect upon Pearl Harbor, we are reminded that the Merchant Marine was there at the beginning, and we honor them this day. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And now, Dr. Todd Irby with the Deputy Secretary of the California Department of Veterans Affairs has a proclamation, I guess, you want to give, sir? Come on up. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As an Air Force veteran, it is my distinct honor and privilege to appear before you today on behalf of Governor Brown and Dr. Vito Ambassiani, the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs, affectionately known as CalVet, and to appear in this hallowed place and in the shadow of such a beautiful airplane, the uh, Fairchild F-105 Thunder Chief. As I said, it's my honor to read to you a proclamation from Governor Brown that gives and should give each of us a gentle reminder of why it is that we are here today, those that we honor, and why we should always honor them, particularly the honorees of today, our Merchant Mariners. On Memorial Day, we pay tribute to Americans who have suffered and died in war. The custom of marking this day originated just after the Civil War. To help heal the wounds of war, Americans in all parts of the country began decorating the graves of the dead with flowers, a universal symbol of the renewal of life. As a small step in the lengthy task of reuniting a nation divided, we chose to honor all the dead, Union and Confederate, regardless of our own allegiances during that terrible struggle. After the First World War, we expanded our observance to honor all Americans who have fought and died in any, any of our nation's wars. In 1971, the United States Congress declared Memorial Day to be a national holiday observed on the last Monday in May. Today, I ask all Californians to pay tribute to our fallen military heroes. In their memory, I have ordered that flags be flown at half-staff 
on all state buildings and grounds throughout the state. In addition, I would ask you to participate in the National Moment of Remembrance and pause at 3 p.m. on Memorial Day for a moment of silence to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Now, therefore, I, Edmund G. Brown, Jr., Governor of the State of California, do hereby proclaim May 30th, 2016 as Memorial Day, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the State of California to be affixed this 19th day of May, 2016. Edmund G. Brown, Jr., Governor of the State of California, attested to by Alex Padilla, Secretary of State. Thank you very much. As everybody looked at their watches, <laughs> we are running a little late. So I'm going to take a liberty here, and I think it's in respect to the admiral who's going to be speaking. We're going to go ahead and have the River City Concert Band play God's Country, and hopefully during that time the flyover will be and we'll be on the road again. Tom, you're up.
Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker today is Thomas A. Cropper, Rear Admiral, United States Navy, retired, president of the California Maritime Academy. Rear Ad a retired Rear Admiral Thomas A. Cropper was appointed as president of the California Maritime Academy in 2012, following a 31-year career in the United States Navy. Most recently, Admiral Cropper directed education and sea training for Navy ships and aviation squadrons deploying to the Western Pacific and the Middle East. Throughout his service in the Navy, Admiral Cropper has held a number of challenging shore assignments, including attendance at the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School, service as military assistant in the Office of Secretary of Defense William Cohen, and appointed as the Navy Federal Executive Fellow at the Booking Institute, Brooking Institute. He also led Strike University at the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center, served as Chief of Staff, United States Third Fleet, headed the Joint Chiefs of Staff Working Group chartered with the development of national level security and strategy, and managed 24,000 people in combat operation as Deputy Commander, U.S. Naval Force, U.S. Command, U.S. Central Command. He has flown nearly 5,000 hours in 43 different aircraft and has logged over 1,200 carrier arrested landings. And by this time, he should be shook up, I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, watch it on the movies, of course, not being in a plane where the Admiral Cropper was commissioned from the Navy Reserve Officer Training Corps program in 1981. Here they come again. Very nice. Let's give him a big hand. Admiral Cropper was commissioned from the Naval Reserve Officers Training Corps program in 1981 after graduating from Iowa State University with a degree in engineering operations. And I'm going to skip down to uh, Admiral Cropper's honors include the Michael Ripley Award as Navy Test Pilot School Instructor of the Year, the U.S. Atlantic Fleet Pilot of the Year, the Defense Superior Service Medal, Meritary Service Medal, and the Legion of Merit. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Cropper, retired. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning. You know, I wrote that in my speech to make sure that we did do it in the morning, so I'm, I know you're checking your watches. And uh, it's a beautiful California day, and the breeze is picking up. And it's uh, Dr. Irby, I also want to say thanks for being at an Air Force base. After stopping with only 400 feet and uh, all those landings, it's nice to have an extra 10,000. So <laughs> Navy pilots like Air Force bases quite a bit. Uh, but this is a wonderful day to gather and remember. A day to be thankful for the many Americans who have honored us with sacrifice through generations and who have made us free men and women. I'm especially privileged to be in a special place here at Memorial Plaza with each of you as we bear witness and have borne witness to our comrades who answered the nation's call of duty. I want to uh, thank our community leaders from the many impactful organizations here in Rancho Cordova for their very kind invitation for me to be here this morning, so thank you. Today, we observe Memorial Day. This is a tradition, as Dr. Irby mentioned, that uh, stretches back following the horrific toll of the American Civil War that ended 150 years ago. It was originally known as Decoration Day, and this national holiday serves to remind us of those who gave up their future so we could have ours. Throughout our history, millions of men and women have put on the cloth of the nation and put their lives on the line for our freedoms. They have suffered the flames of war at Valley Forge and Yorktown, at Gettysburg in Antietam, at San Juan Hill, at Bellow Wood, in the North Atlantic, 
at Guadalcanal, Midway, Leyte Gulf, at Chosin, at Quezon, at Kakchi City, Fallujah, Kandahar. No soldier, airman, or marine in those battles gave up life easily. No sailor in the Navy, Coast Guard, or Merchant Marine in those battles at sea slipped under without tears. Our nation ultimately prevailed, but only with sustained vigilance and much sacrifice by most whose names we will never know. They bequeathed upon our nation a gift, a gift of liberty, a gift given in their own lives, and a gift of freedom symbolized in the stars and stripes. We are Americans. The flag is indeed our symbol. It represents our history. It represents our dreams, and it represents our accomplishments. All of them indelibly expressed in a very vibrant red, white, and blue. Our flag was carried in those battles, starting back in the Revolutionary War, where the odds were against us, but we won our freedom nonetheless. We built a nation around our banner and have waved it proudly ever since. This beautiful banner was raised by the hands of brave Marines at Iwo Jima. Those heroes are long gone now, but their legacy is alive at the Marine Memorial in Washington, D.C. And for those of you who've had the privilege of visiting, you know that carved into the monument are the words, when uncommon valor was a common virtue. Those words account the awesome sacrifice that so many made. Those sacrifices by our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and Merchant Marines throughout every conflict. Every great story about the sacrifices of American fighting men and women contains elements of what I consider two extraordinary and important uh, foundations of personal leadership. Service, family. Perhaps one of the finest examples of how those two elements came together and came to life was in the movie Saving Private Ryan. You may recall that Captain John Miller, played by Tom Hanks, was tasked to lead a very difficult mission. And having survived the harrowing Normandy invasion, he sent to find Private Ryan, the last surviving son of an Iowa family that's already lost a number of their sons in that war. Captain Miller fulfills his obligations to his commanders and to Private Ryan's family, tragically losing his own life in doing so. And in, is what perhaps the most touching and deeply meaningful scene from that movie, the aged Private Ryan kneels before the simple grave of Captain Miller and says to his wife of many years, tell me I've led a good life. Tell me I'm a good man. So how are we, the living, to answer for generations of heroes who gave us their lives so that we would live freely? For all of us, our answer can be found in service. We must serve this nation, our communities, and one another in daily actions that demonstrate the truest sense of service. Service requires vigilance and sacrifice. Service matters. Real service embodies a commitment with no expectation of anything in return. It means service to something beyond self, something beyond the tangible, and often something beyond the predictable. And real service brings the greatest success every time. Today, as we gather another greatest generation of Americans is fighting for us right now. In a decade of war, they have sacrificed and bled for us. We must not, we cannot, we shall not forget them. Many of this generation have taken their final rest. Their gift, gift of freedom, born of personal sacrifice is one we can never fully repay. But we can begin to try. 
we must reach out to those for whom these heroes cared the most, their families, and make these families our own. Who will soothe the grieving mother or spouse or children? Who among us can honor their sacrifice with service of our own? Small acts of compassion by many hands will help heal the wounds of profound loss. We must also remember the living, especially returning wounded warriors. They've suffered greatly for our nation and we truly owe them a lifetime of gratitude and support. Many have lost their limbs, but they have not lost their dignity. It is our obligation to see that these citizen heroes are not forgotten and that we help them and their families adjust to the new realities of their injuries. These dedicated war fighters deserve our very best attention and sustained community efforts. I want to stop and talk about meaning. As mentioned earlier, meaning, something about what we're doing today has meaning. The service of our veterans has meaning. The sacrifices of our dead and wounded have meaning. They give meaning to our own lives. Allow me to paraphrase this idea of meaning from a letter to servicemen and women by actor, economist, and writer Ben Stein. He writes, Oprah Winfrey talks a lot about meaning in her life. For her, meaning is dieting and then having her photo on the cover of her magazine cover. This is not meaning. Meaning is doing for others. Meaning is risking your life for others. Meaning is putting your body's and family's peace of mind on the line to defeat some of the most evil, sick killers the world has ever known. Meaning is leaving the comfort of home to fight to make sure that there will still be a home for your family and for your nation and for free men and women everywhere. Ben Stein finished his letter with these words. You are everything to us as we go through our little days. And you are in the prayers of the nation and every decent man and woman on the planet. That's who you are and what you mean. I hope you know that. Love, Ben Stein. So on this National Day of Remembrance, I would ask each of us to rekindle our own sense of service and meaning. The covenant we share with our comrades from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard and Merchant Marine and their families is a sacred obligation we cannot forget. We must remember them. We are free men and women on account of their lives. We must add our own measure to their last full measure so that someday, many long years from now, when we look into the eyes of our loved ones like that aged Private Ryan and say, tell me, I'm a good man or woman, we'll already know the answer because we remembered. God bless our nation's veterans, our fallen warriors, and their ever precious families. Thank you and heave ho. Thank you, Admiral. <clears throat> this next one I do every Memorial Day. I ask the band not to play because I got a cold and I don't want to sing and bore you, so I'll just read this if I may. It's, it's called My Buddy, and it's something I think that Memorial Day, uh, it should be read because it's, it's a great song, but it's also great lyrics. It goes something like this. Nights are long since you went away. I think about you all through the day. My buddy, my buddy. Nobody quite so true. Miss your voice, the touch of your hand. Just long to know that you understand. My buddy, my buddy, your buddy misses you. Thank you.
And now, if you will, as your name is called, please stand. These are the people who work all year long. In fact, we'll probably be going next week or the week after, uh, deciding what was wrong and how can we cut it shorter, if we can do that. <laughs> anyway, Council Member Robert McGarvey, our chairman. Stacy Delaney, City of Rancho Cordova. Hold your applause until we all get done. That's the way it'll go a little faster. Kim Walker, City of Rancho Cordova. Desley Verdun, City of Rancho Cordova. Evelyn Richardson, City of Rancho Cordova. Tara Ricks, VA Hospital. Maria Alms, VA Hospital. John Nodal Parcia, I hope I got that right. VA Hospital, no. Rick Swinford, PER Rancho Cordova, Elks Lodge, number 2484. Vernon Winthrop, VF Post 10125. Philip Hobart, President of the Pacific Merchant Marine Council, Navy League of the United States. Colleen Wallace, Republic Service, is she here? Uh, she was going to be here, okay. And Janice Foster Downs, Republic Services. If you will, give them a big hand, that's our committee. Now we'll have uh, Amazing Grace by Rob Roy. Is he here? That's something I didn't check on. Ah, oh, here he is. I thought you got lost. Oh, all in black this morning. Hmm. Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much. Now we'll have the benediction, if you please rise, by Deacon Walter J. Little, St. John Vianney. Let us pray. Eternal life giver, from the beginning of humankind, your warriors have gathered to share sacred moments, to drink from the cup and to recount battles won and lost. As this memorial occasion draws to a close, we have paused to honor those who have laid down their swords, both mythic and real, so passionately wielded in defense of righteousness and the cause of freedom. As we remember all those who walked with us and for us through the valley of the shadow of death, we are mindful of God's call to the prophet Jeremiah. Before you were born, I set you aside. I dedicated you. Rise up and go to those to whom I send you, for I am with you always. Source of all being, as we reflect on the collage of the past 200 plus years as a nation, we note that our emotions, like life, cover the gamut from the ecstasy and love of relationship to the horror and the devastation of the loss of life 
taken, and yet through it all, we have managed to give thanks for the countless blessings that we have been given. And so as we depart this sacred space, this hallowed ground, we again commend their spirits of our warriors to your eternal mercy and care. And may the blessings of Almighty God, who is able to keep us from falling and who raises us up victoriously, be upon us and remain with us and keep us safe. As we say, Shalom, Pachem, Salam, Om Shante, Amen. We now retire to colors. Give a big hand to really great young people. I also want to thank the uh, Navy Sea Cadets for doing the honor of uh, helping the uh, personnel uh, lay the flowers down here. They also did a great job. You know, these young people, I hate to keep you too long, uh, really, they're yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and so forth and so on. And they're really a great bunch of kids, and they're learning, and that's the main thing. So let's give them a big hand. Echo taps, Tom. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Would you mind taking seats again, please? I'd like to introduce Kenneth Blue, president of the Sacramento Valley Chapter, American Merchant Marines, veterans of World War II, would like just to say a few words. I should first help the, the gentleman that helped me up the stairs. At, at 91, I'm classified, I think, as having an ambulatory problem. Okay. Uh, you've had, had a lot of thanks and a lot of credit already. I'll try to keep mine short. But, sirs, the co-chairman, co-master of ceremonies, thank you very much. <laughs> to the speakers. Mr. Congressman, Mr. State Assemblyman, I'm from the Department of California VA, and 
from the California Maritime Academy in Vallejo. He's laughing. He, he recognizes me from the time that somebody tripped over the plug and then the loudspeaker didn't work. <laughs> thank, thank you all. The River City Band, thank you. And the vocalists. And, and the solo musicians. And I think my fellow uh, veterans, all of them would join me in thanking you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today and helping us with our memories. Thank you very much. Okay. Janet, uh, God bless America. And before that starts, I just wanted to let you know that I failed to introduce my wife, Beverly, over here. And we both hit the 91. She keeps, she tries to keep me straight. We both hit 90 this year, so uh, we're here. Anyway, God bless America, Janice. I guess we are. I'd like to acknowledge, if I may, the following uh, sponsors and support we received. The value, uh, VA Northern California Healthcare System and the City of Rancho Cordova for all they have done to make this ceremony possible. Alpha Graphics for their terrific program and posters. American Merchant Marines, veterans of the World War II Sacramento Valley and Golden Gate Chapter. BMJ uh, Productions. And if you need a tape of this whole ceremony, we'll have them. All you got to do is call the city. Capital Region of the American Red Cross, Cordova High School, U.S. Air Force Junior ROTC, Daughters of the American Revolution, Elite Party Rentals, Flower Fiesta, Leonard Yates, 709 American Legion, National Center, Joners Incorporated, Sacramento Chapter 133 and Heroes of 76, Pacific Merchant Marine Council, Navy League of the United States, Rancho Cordova Boy Scout Troop Number 363 and Cub Pack, uh, number 28, Rancho Cordova Elks Lodge, number 2484, and their Cats of Spirit program. And a very special thanks to the River City Concert Band, and also I'd like to thank Janice Swartz, Larry Womack, and Ralph Buell, who did the trumpet solo on the Merchant uh, Marines song. Republic Services, Rod Roy Bagpipers, Sacramento Consul Navy League of the United States, United States Navy Sea Cadets, Sacramento Division, Veterans of Foreign War, 10125, Vulture Road Formation Team, 
thank you all for coming out today. God bless the USA. And believe me, have a great journey home and get out and enjoy yourself. And I thank you for all your attention and your kindness. Thank you. Thank you.